Bonjour, hello, welcome to Max Mountain World. Today I'm just going to do a little video, maybe quite a big video actually, on the Moxon antenna, on the building of it. Now, there's a few noises in the background, who knows, I get my usual sound problems in the garage, although I'm right next to the door, and also lighting things. So forgive me if any of that stuff kind of gets in the way of this. Hopefully it won't. Anyway, the story of the Moxon antennas. My first one. Uh, a couple of friends of mine in Scotland built it for me. And I got it here. It was during the COVID situation. More vehicles going past. And uh, it arrived. I adjusted things, changed things, did a few videos on it. Got it working. It worked fantastic. I made my own pole for it. That was the problem. Because at one point it came down and it smashed itself. So I got a second one off another friend of mine, but in another country, in Austria. A friend of mine, Gus, in Austria. A lot of people that view my channel know Gus very well. He's, he's, he's one of the legends of 11 meter radio. So I was over there a couple of weeks ago and uh, we kind of, I've got his old Moxon, put it that way. I also, more importantly, got his spider beam mast, which is fantastic. It's way better than anything I attempted to construct, and it can go a lot higher. It can go up to about 10 meter antenna height, uh, although it is adjustable. I'll explain more of that as I go. What I'm going to do now is a quick look outside, show, show you what the weather's doing here today. It's magnificent. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the boot of the car. Everything is in the boot of the Jaguar. I'm going to take the stuff out, lay it out, explain stuff, assemble it, and then I'll explain all the intricacies of it and the mast and stuff like that. So that's it. Here we go. Video for today. Okay, so spinning around, I've got the door jammed open. Well, not jammed open electrically, got the button on, the red button. What a beautiful day. Five o'clock, just after five, I've just finished work and Temperature's 22 degrees up here, 1800 meters, 6000 feet altitude and nobody about except for these cars going past and people working and odds and ends of things. Guy spotting a wheelie, just missed that on his push bike going down. But uh, the hunt for clouds, we have a little cloud there, a little cloud or two there and that's it. Just a beautiful day, nothing above. Absolutely astonishing. No wind or very little wind you can see by the grass. Another job for me to do. And that's it. So I'm going to go into the garage here. I'm going to set this all up and explain exactly as I have just said I was going to do. It's a dog as well. <laughs> so everything, as I say, fits in the boot here. I'll show you what I've got in here. Now, just to protect the cover. The base plate, I've just got some rags and things in there to stop it from doing anything too silly. Everything I need is in that bag. The wire, the coax, a couple of tools, a couple of bolts. This is the, the main plate here with the mounting, which I'll show you in a minute. The cross beam, a couple of antennas for the car, uh, the stinger, the springer. I've got the three... Uh, Fire sticks ready to go. The longest one, the four feet one, doesn't really fit in with its spring on, so I carry the spring separately. The three feet one works magic. The two feet one, I have DXed a long way on that one. So, this is all the stuff in here. The four poles, the main uh, spider beam mast, and just a supplementary thing. I have uh, in the car here, the Fox Tango 891, the FT891 radio which uh, sits just nice and neat in there. Of course, I've got the kit that I made up for the fascia, so when I'm DXing, I can put it up there and it's nice and handy. It's powered, it's, the car's an automatic, so I can't afford to be somewhere remote and <laughs> the battery runs down the car. So behind the seat here, I have a, a camper van battery that powers it all. And I charge that when I'm on the move, just by switching on the inverter, mini trickle charger, and it works an absolute treat. Other things in here, umbrella, in case it gets too sunny, mountain hat, just in case it gets too sunny, and in case it doesn't get sunny and gets wet, I've got a, a very, very heavy waterproof jacket there as well, and a couple of covers and things, but that's basically all of the stuff in the back of the car. Okay, so what I'm about to show you is 
the spider beam mast but also the Moxon. This is the Mark III as I've been calling it. It's a conglomeration of the first two, eliminating all the errors. I used to be in the building trade and there's one thing as saying in the building trade, when you build a house, the first one you don't get it right, the second one you make mistakes and the third one you get it right and this has happened with me with the Moxon. The first mast I made came down, smashed the first one, the second one I didn't quite have the, uh, the top sections right and it kind of concertinaed itself and busted the mocks on again. So last weekend, just before heading out, I made, it took me about five hours in the garage here, I made a new one exactly as I wanted it and it's worked out perfect. It's easy, it's safe and it works a treat. Normally compared to the factory built mag mount antenna on the car, on a comparison I was getting between six and eight S points more having the mocks on pointing at someone. So anyway, here's a little look around the actual components of it. As I say, a fair bit of noise, people working, people doing stuff, whatever. But anyway, the components. This is the base that I've made up with, uh, I'll show you that getting assembled. It's dead easy and it's dead safe. The coax for the antenna. This is the spider beam. This is the four posts. This is the cross beam for the main centre section. I have reusable um, ties here, which are there to keep the coax down the side of the, 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 the mast. It works a lot better if it's straight and not just hanging about, swinging around in the wind or whatever. This I use as a final just to keep the, the second pole in place here. And of course the main component is the wire, which I'll go into more detail just now. I made this up at a piece of 0.7mm twin cable, blue on one side marks out the negative part, the reflector, and brown on this side with the insulators there and at the end there that I just passed at the beginning of this section, and done all with carabiners, the connection direct there. So I'll put this together and <laughs> I'll do a video of it going together. Hopefully it'll come together quite nicely and quickly. So I'm going to fire this together right now and I'll explain everything once it's in place. I can go right round it a lot easier. Perhaps a little music with this bit because the sound won't be so great if I'm over there. Anyway, start the stopwatch.
the stopwatch. Okay, so I'll start at the bottom. Obviously I've got this installed now next to there and obviously that's a drive-on plate where I drive on diagonally and that gives the best support to it all. I can put the wheel about there, about halfway in, maybe two-thirds way in. And obviously this spider beam, that can be strapped onto anything. Picnic tables, random posts, gate posts, you name it. It can be attached on or I can have it next to the car. Now, I didn't use the top I think three sections, two sections, because they're just too small, too weak. And the sizing of this that I've got, another modification I did for this was uh, to set this up so that it's got a bolt on it, it can't move. It doesn't need to be tightened up, it's just holding it in place. And then when this goes up, I'll show you, I can do another video actually on the, on the spider beam. If someone wants, if you put a note in the comments below, and uh, I'll do a separate one on this and the full installation outside. Obviously, I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes for the video. So, the coax. I've got 12 metres of coax, which is plenty sufficient. It clips onto this, which means that that's not actually pulling down on the antenna itself. There's a little bit of weight in this, but not much. So, that's the main connection, uh, positive, negative blah blah blah. Basically acts as a as a, a dipole, a quarter wave dipole. Uh, one side negative, one side positive like I say. Now one of the things I learned from the first one is I've marked everything up two, two, two and two. That one's number three. This one here is number one. This one here is number four, and each attachment's done with these carabiners onto very strong keyring holder things. They work magnificently, and it's a lot easier to actually set the thing up so that it springs into its, its uh, position very easily. That's basically it. Now, if I have a look back here, you can see that I've got the two wires almost parallel. Okay, the back one, the 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 director, it's kind of it's kind of sagging down a bit in the middle, but that's nothing. What we have here is a continuous cable from the insulator. That's a specific dimension, and I'll come back to that in a second. A little modification I did. Then it goes round. This is the negative, all the way round. This is the reflector. Number four, again, carabiner onto the um, the ring. Insulator, this is the live part. The live part, let's go under here, into here, coax, right the way around, and we're back where we started on this. Now, all these dimensions, the dimensions of the insulator here, the dimension of the reflector, and the dimension of the, um, the live part, is all in, I'll come back to that in a minute, it's all on the internet. You can download this, uh, this Moxon calculator, if you freeze the video, that's the address. Now I've, gone, I've, I've done that in previous videos. All you do is you punch in uh, the frequency you want, the centre frequency I've been looking for is 26.9, so I get down to 26 and up to 27. Uh, I'll show you how I did that with the reflect with the insulators. The diameter of the wire, it does all the calculations for you. In inches, feet, meters, millimeters, and all the wavelength stuff as well. And an actual diagram to show you what you do with it all. The only exception to that is that the feed point here actually has a 40 millimeter um, separation from these two. So a little top tip is, I put a 40 millimeter onto the reflector, so that this is perfectly rectangular. Each angle is 90 degrees. And what I've done here is, the calculation said that these should be 10.2 centimeters for the insulators. I've made them a bit longer, I've made them up to about uh, 
10 point, I think it was 10.9 or something. And with the increase in the size of the, the 40 mil, it doesn't sound much, but it makes a huge difference of the reflector. It actually has increased the bandwidth that this will tune to. Little top tip for you there. The cross beam is all bolted together with uh, separators to keep it in place. The angle of that is 140 degrees, therefore making the smaller angle 40 degrees. That is quite, quite important, although I've changed that a little bit. If you see that it's not actually sitting flat, it's sitting cocked up like that. So that it's pointing about 5 to 10 degrees up in the air. And that's very easily adjusted once it's assembled just by twisting the main bars. These bars are just sitting on top of there. This is just sitting on top of there. It's bolted onto here permanently and it's fixed. It's absolutely solid and very, very light. I've not weighed it. Maybe I should do it. But, uh, but that's it. The four fishing rods, everything in place, everything bolted together and ready to rock and roll at that. Out in the field, obviously, the car's going to be sitting diagonally here like this. But I, I've assembled it next to the car. It doesn't uh, interfere with anything. When it is sitting next to the car and the antennas are in the car, it's right next to them. It's, it's almost designed for it. And if it does touch the car, it touches the rails and not the paintwork. So that's basically the Moxon in a one -er. A couple of little points. The Moxon has a little rubber cap over the end and that stops everything from falling out inside. I also, the first two sections, I've done the same bolting system with a couple of bolts they don't need to be tightened, finger tight does, and I have two different sizes for the uh, the tool for doing up the, um, the Jubilee clips. Not the Queen's Jubilee, the Moxon Jubilee. And uh, the, the, I've got two sizes because the top one there is 8mm, the other ones there that came with it are 7mm. And obviously I can't put that up in the garage here just now. But again, as, as I say, if someone wants a video on the separate, a separate video on the uh, spider beam mast, then I'll, I'll be quite happy to do that if there's enough demand. So make comments below. Tell me what you think of this. As it's set up, you can see... The wire is at its 5 to 10 degree up, which makes a huge difference, huge, huge difference. And it's absolutely parallel and absolutely square. The fact that it's sitting cocked up like this, if it went further over, it would be square, but I don't want it. I want that to be pointing slightly up the way. It really makes it perform. So that's the mocks on. All ready to rock. <laughs> Light as anything and uh, it doesn't really swing about quite as much as you think it would in the wind but with the mast I can adjust exactly how high it goes. Anything from where it is, if I wanted it like that, to 10 metres antenna, the wire itself at 10 metres up. So that's it. In the lead out what I'll do is I'll take it all back down and put it back in the car. So anyway that's the Moxon. Thanks very much for watching. Any questions Put them in the comments below or contact me. I've had much, much demand to do a video like this through Facebook, through the YouTube channel, through Instagram. So this is it. And hopefully you enjoyed it. Show the appreciation. It really helps the algorithm for YouTube blast my channel on and stuff. And I'm pretty sure people are going to find this useful. This is a fantastic antenna. So powerful for the size of it. Incredible. Anyway, that's it for today. Thanks very much for watching. Keep subscribing. And until the next video, ciao.